If you're someone who uses all the pieces in Outlook, you might be wondering how you can see your tasks while you're looking at your email or see your calendar while you're looking at your tasks. And there is a way to do that. It is the Outlook to-do bar. I'll show you how to use that Outlook to-do bar today on Tuesday Tech Training. Hello, and welcome to today's Tuesday Tech Training. My name is Jennifer Stewart. I'm the owner of Gateway Productivity, and I'm a tech and productivity trainer. Today, I'll show you how to use the Outlook to-do bar. This is a tool that can greatly boost your efficiency and your productivity. It allows you to view other parts of Outlook while you're in a different part. So for instance, if you're in your email, you can see your calendar and your tasks. Or if you're in your calendar, you can see your tasks and your contacts. There are all different kinds of combinations, and I'll show you where that lives and how to add different parts to it. Here you can see we're in our Outlook inbox, and the way you find the to-do bar is up here under View. So you'll choose view and here I'll move my picture out of the way because right under there is what we're looking for. This is our to-do bar. And right now you can see there's no check marks, which means everything's turned off. The to-do bar shows up on the right-hand side of the screen and I can choose what parts I want included. I can choose just the calendar and give it a second. It will sync up to your calendar and show you what you have going the rest of the week. You can also add people, which is your contacts. And if you have some active people that have to do with this email, they may show up there. And there's all different kinds of things you can do. You can search for people so you can find them pretty quickly and make a phone call. And then of course we have our tasks that we could have here as well. So that's how you add the different parts and it adds them in the order that you put them. So the first thing's always at the top and so on. So if I take all these out by clicking the X's, which is how you remove them, or you can go and uncheck them here, or you can also choose to turn it off here, it will put them in the order that I choose. So if I want tasks first, and then my calendar, and then my contacts, I can rearrange this. And then I also have the option to resize everything. If I want to see less of my tasks, so that I can see more of the calendar and I'm not going to use contacts as much, but I want it there and I have a lot of appointments, maybe this part is a little bigger. So you can resize these however you'd like. There is a minimum size for them to be. And so eventually, so for instance, with the calendar, I can't go beyond that. You have to at least be able to see that much. And then you can see a little scroll bar appears. So you, there's gonna be a minimum size that it can be, but maximum, you can pretty much make it about as big as you want. And you can see that's as small as the people one will go. So have fun with this, play around, decide what you need to see the most, and you can have that on your screen. What's great about this is you can actually have different combinations in different screens. So while I'm in my inbox, maybe I need the tasks to be up top. But then if I go to my calendar, right now you can see the tasks on top, but if I wanted to change my mind, I can go again to view and to do bar, I could have my contacts on top and then my tasks. And obviously when you're in the calendar, it doesn't make sense to also have the calendar on the right hand side, although some people will have the week view going on here. And I guess you do have on the left-hand side, the calendar going on. So in the calendar view, you probably don't need a calendar in your to-do bar, but that's completely up to you. And so then I can resize again, have my little area to search people if I need to, and then have all my tasks. And in the same way, I can go to my tasks area in Outlook. And you can see here, I chose to just have the calendar on. So there are tons of different combinations that you can do here. And again, remember when you're going to view and to do bar, the order that you choose them is the order that it will put them on the right hand side. Whatever you click first, will go at the top and so on. And if you decide, oh, I don't need this anymore. I want to just focus on my tasks and not see the calendar. I can just turn it off here. Or as you saw previously, I can use the little X to close one section at a time. 
The last thing I want to discuss is the dynamic aspect of the to-do bar. So what's great about this is not only can you see these items, but as you can see, it's dynamic. It is picking up this information. So these are all emails that I flagged. If I wanna get straight to that email, I just need to double click it and it'll open my email for me. If I scroll down, I can see my actual tasks. So let's see what we've got here. Let's choose this one here. If I double click that, it'll open my task. So this is all dynamic. And you can see when I hover over this, I can even add a category. And then in the calendar, it's the same way. If I double click a day, it will bring me straight to the calendar view. And then I can see the view that I have in my calendar itself, and I can change that up here if I need to. And now you can see, since it took me into the calendar, my to-do bar has changed a little bit. Having that to-do bar turned on with the different pieces that you need on a regular basis saves you from having to switch between the different areas in the bottom left corner. It can increase your efficiency so much just by being able to see your tasks while you're working on your email, to be able to glance at your calendar while you're working on your tasks, and so on. And to be able to search for those contacts is huge as well, rather than having to go over to the contacts or people area within Outlook. Have you had a light bulb moment from this training? If so, please let me know in the comments below. You can also put questions in there and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You can also leave the video a thumbs up or you can share it with someone you think could benefit from the information. And don't forget to subscribe by clicking the red button below. When you do that, you'll see a bell icon. If you click on the bell icon, you'll receive notifications each time new videos are posted. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.